One of the keys to every good organization is the way that the employees and the managers communicate with one another. And a critical thing to factor in is something called managing up. Today, we're gonna to be discussing managing up and what that means here at Envision and what it should mean for your organization. So managing up is not a one-to-one -one relationship. It's bi-directional, meaning that the managers are obviously there to help guide and direct, but the employees are empowered to manage up, managing their own managers. That in a nutshell is the premise of managing up. One of the key components of managing up is communication. It allows the employee to communicate better and more efficiently and effectively to the manager. So if there's a brand new initiative or if there's something they're not quite understanding or appreciating, it's a great opportunity for the employee to have that um, authority to communicate that to the manager. Nothing is better for a good manager than an employee actually spearheading new thoughts, new initiatives, and bringing those to the table. Managing up allows for that to happen almost organically after you've really uh, integrated it into your environment. So what managing up looks like is first and foremost, open-mindedness. So as managers, you know, it, it can oftentimes be led to believe that we don't want people to critique or question what we're saying. So as a manager, you really need to have that open-mindedness to say, I don't know everything. And oftentimes the people that I'm surrounded by may have better ideas than I do. So set your egos aside and focus on allowing your employees to bring thoughts to the table that then you can nurture. All right, so some of the key benefits of managing up. One, communication. Obviously, open channels of communication make it really easy for managers to understand where you're coming from, what your thoughts are, your abilities to communicate, and all that kind of good stuff. Number two, it shows initiative. So when you're managing up and bringing great thoughts and leadership to your own manager, that highlights to that manager that you're showing initiative, you've got leadership skills and qualities, and something that that manager may want to nurture um, for future growth potential opportunities. Plus you get a big gold shiny star next to your name amongst the other staff. When a brand new manager comes into play and uh, you're not quite sure who they are and they're not quite sure who you are, it gives the opportunity to kind of break that ice when you're starting to bring those, again, creative thoughts to the table. So a great way um, to break ice and get to know one another and start building on that relationship because you and your manager are likely gonna be spending a lot of time with one another. So one thing to consider when managing up, it's not about bossing people around. It's not about literally bossing your boss around. It's about having dialogue and collaboration so that your managers understand where you're coming from, your points of view, and building that great rapport with you. So keep that in mind. This isn't a dictatorship one way or the other. It's really about a collaboration channel between you and your manager. I'm Sylvia and I am the Digital Marketing Manager at Envision. So as both a manager and somebody who reports to a manager, how has managing up affected your work experience? I think as someone that was always reporting to a manager, what I kind of understood as managing up at the time was um, just having to upwardsly communicate anything that was a blocker to me. Um, and having that in place always kind of increased that relationship I had with my manager. It was about getting to know the ins and outs of how they liked um, information to be presented to them, what they needed in order to present something to a client. Um, it was understanding what their goals were. And in turn, it helped me be a more successful employee to my managers always in that I was able to think, okay, what are my goals in relation to their goals and their goals in relation to the success of the company. So likewise, now with managing my staff, I try to make it really clear what George's goals are as the CEO, which in turn relate to my goals and then communicate that downwards so that everyone understands that they really have a purpose with all the tasks that they're doing and they're not really feeling like the tasks that they complete are simply tactical. So why do you think this technique works so well? Uh, you obviously have an interesting perspective. Have, have you seen people in your staff taking advantage of this? Um, 
I guess I think it works well because it's kind of related to OKRs, which is something that we're really working towards in our company. So that's uh, objectives and key results. It's really understanding like the entire goals of a company that you're working towards. Um, I think really frequently, like if, if you're just working for a really large company, you're understanding that I am a part of this company because I am helping them make more money, right? With that, especially for millennials and Gen Z, which is like a lot of the workforce right, right now, uh, you can start to feel that your work is really empty when you know all your objectives relate to monetary gains. I think when you have objective and key results that you know they relate a lot more to how we're growing things, like the the the, the overall goals of like where you want to take your career as well, it puts into consideration everyone as a person and and how we relate to reaching that greater goal together. So it's a lot more about teamwork and that consideration of like you know how how the trickle down of certain goals work. How has your team taken on this management style specifically? I think with my team, it's about really overcoming this like perfectionism and saying that, you know, I I internally don't necessarily need to see your work in its finished form. I need checkpoints along the way so that you're telling me, hey, I've gotten this 50% of the way done, 75% of the way done, and I have questions on the way, and you're not sitting there silently kind of wondering to yourself like a day before the deadline comes, like, am I gonna do this right? Those checkpoints have been like really valuable to us actually executing work more efficiently because we're saying it does not have to be completed before we're having a check-in together. I think it's applicable for all companies and for all people to think of as a mindset, as an employee or a manager anywhere, um, because having this openness of style and getting to know your direct manager and how they want work to be presented to them is just invaluable in creating success for yourself. I always found that once I had a good relationship with my manager, I was just able to fine tune my work to present exactly how they wanted it, to pre-write an email that was gonna go out to a client and have them read it and quickly go over it before I send it out. Like all of that has been so valuable to us in being more efficient. And um, I think it's also made for a really positive work experience for myself personally. It's a lot more gratifying, so I definitely recommend this managerial style. So I've been on both sides of the railroad track when it comes to management. I've had managers that are literally dictators and I've had managers who were so open and more like mentors who were open to ideas and suggestions and recommendations. I would advise that you become the other one, the one that allows for open communication, allows to, uh, the one that allows for um, ideas and thought leadership to be brought to you because the other side of it where you're the dictator style manager um, you're not going to have longevity with your people and truthfully they're probably talking shit behind your back so different types of management works for different types of organizations and also different types of individuals managing up in our organization and our people works really well love to hear what works well for you so leave a comment below so if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like them, give it a like and subscribe to our channel below. That's a wrap.